Okay, so we've got this dry. Now what we're going to do is come in. I've got it upside down because I don't want to be worried about anything other than just kind of getting, getting the final statements of what it is I want to do. So I'm going to come back in with this dark again. It's, it is a black horse, so that's why there's so much dark. I don't mean to be boring, but uh, we can, we've got a lot of, a lot of different uh, colors in this dark, too. So um, let's see. Let's look at, go back down to the muzzle area. Now, I'm just going to kind of smooth this out again. Be very careful with the paper because, as I say, you don't want to lift because you've already done that. So, and we are thinking, hmm, we'll be pretty close to the end of what we're doing. Uh, and this, this is actually the fun part. I think all the other stuff, getting the base of, the, of what you're painting down is, is fun. And then it gets kind of, there's a, the middle part of a painting can be kind of boring. Then, then it gets fun again. So hopefully that's kind of where we're in now. Okay, so we're just going to kind of get this lip area. I want to state that. And there's a little fold under the bottom lip. And then we've got that little area. So, and that's kind of how you're going to have to take yourself through it is, um, well, we've got this little line and this overlaps that and you don't need to know what it is. We don't have to get into the specifics of, of what each part of the animal is. Just show the viewer that you've seen it and that you're aware of it. Okay. Now we're going to come around here and I'm going to actually move this a little closer so that I don't have to move my head around so much because Maybe I'm just not feeling like doing that right now. All right. Um, so, come in here. It, it looks kind of convoluted, but, but it all does come together, the muzzle of a horse. All you have to do is grab one. I'll give you an idea of... Okay. So now this is where we're going to come in and we've got, it's wrinkly, it's got wrinkles because it's very, very soft and it can kind of wrap around stuff. It's how it eats, how she eats. This is not an it, it's a she. Okay, now we've got some more little wrinkly areas right here. And then of course the, the hairs. Um, we'll do a, the background we're going to do for this is going to be just very, very, very basic. This is a vignette. And in a vignette, really they don't, they're, don't even have backgrounds. It's just a, the head and, the, and the, the top area or shoulder area of whatever the animal is. Now, right here we've got little little areas where you can see the hair. We, this is where we want to show this is what horse hair is like. Because if you're going to do, if you're going to paint animals, there's a very select group of people who are actually going to be looking at your, at your art. They're going to be people, generally speaking, who like those animals and um, who have an interest. And so they're going to know things about that animal that, that you might not but you don't want them to really think that because you, you want them to, to feel that you have researched the animal that you're painting and that you're familiar with it. But as an artist, what that means is just look. If you're an artist, look. You just see the world, paint what you see, and that's really, that's all that's expected of you. Okay, so we're going to go back in here, just kind of, because I'm, I'm constantly making comparisons constantly compare 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 okay got a little wrinkly area up in here and i'm just taking you through talk yourself through it whatever is the best way now to indicate the hair on the blaze i'm just doing kind of what i was doing with the 
with the darks um, before, just paint up into the area with the tip of your brush. And that just kind of shows where the white hairs move into the dark hairs. And this is kind of the edge of the nose too, so a little darker area in the modeling there. And I'm just working my way on up to the blaze. And some of these dark hairs actually grow into the white, like so. Getting the final touches to the horse. It's coming up into the ear. A little bit more burnt sienna in the ear color, a little bit reddish, more reddish color. And if you want to describe colors that way, that's fine. That works too. Reddish, more bluish, cooler, darker. Then, let's see. Okay, there's not a whole lot I really want to do to the um, body of the horse. I really want to stay focused on the mane right now, which, which is kind of all over the place. And um, so we're going to kind of go back in here. I've got it upside down because I don't care what it is, what the individual things are that I'm painting. I just care that... I'm getting the texture right and just basically stating the nuance of the animal correctly. So I'm coming up here on the ear. Nice fuzzy ear, very soft ears. I come around here, a little bit darker, make a very short stroke. So I need to kind of wipe some of the paint off because it's sitting a little bit more than I want it to do. I want it to blend more Come around the edge. Now back up here, so some dark. It's where the ear folds in and around because you know, horses ears go in all directions. That's how they can hear what's around them. Okay, now, now I'm going in for the final darks in between this, the main, and I'm going to, going to paint this, and then I'm going to come in with those lights, or really attack the lights, and, that, and you won't even, you won't even notice a lot of what you're doing. Um, once you get the lights in, you got to come behind the ear, and paint those darks in. I guess the average time to paint a vignette um, where you're really going to spend some time is, you know, anywhere from one to three hours. It just depends. That seems to be people's, uh, or the, the most common question is, how long did it take you to paint this? And eh, just as a rule of thumb, that's kind of what it is. And we're going to put some final lights around this, um, the eye, too. Eyes are very important. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to put some final lights, final darks right now in this eye. Come in like so. And go back into this area. Smooth that out a little bit. See, that's what it is. You cut, you're pushing paint around. You just want to do it as well as you can. But that is what is required of, of painting pets or painting animals. You've really got to kind of have an idea of where you're headed and where you've been. Okay, so I really kind of like what's happening with this main thing. Um, and I don't want to disturb a lot of what's there because the water has very nicely blended um, a lot of this. And it keeps it very loose and very fresh. And I like that. So, okay, just going to keep moving along. Better get a little bit more paint. And then. We'll check it out, make sure we've got everything 
everything stated we need to have stated. And I really like the blue that I put in. I think the blue is nice. Keeps things interesting. Can't even really tell that I put any of the purple in. But that was fun to do. And that could be restated as well. So the edges of the mane and the wind. Blowing in the wind. There we get that. Okay. Now... I'm really into scatter vision now. This is the last part, last chance. So I'm really getting in there. The horse hair, uh, the mane, of course, is very coarse. And I'm just going to start now indicating kind of a little bit about what the strands of the hair. Doesn't take much. Come back around here. Uh, put a little bit of brown on my brush there because I don't really want to be lifting. I just want to. Okay, so that's good. A little bit darker there. Okay, I got that. Let's go back around and check this out. Okay, that's good. Go back down in here. This is good. Okay, now the white part, we're, we'll finally get that indicated around the white with the, with the background, which is just going to be a wash. So that's gonna that's gonna indicate that side of the nose. Um, now I'm gonna pull a little bit of titanium white, start mixing it with some of these colors that I've been mixing with the middle tones and with the darks. And I'm gonna try to keep my brush as dry as possible, almost a dry brush effect. Now let's see, I'm gonna go into the nose area here. And a little bit darker than white. Give us some light here. Okay, and even darker because I just want to state the shape we've got here around the muzzle. We'll soften that up just a little bit. Um, the top of the nose right here. Coming in here. Just soften that a little bit. This is just where you kind of bring it all together. There's a, um, let me get, pull some burnt sienna. And the top of the lip, there's a little bit of light there. Um, Come in where some of these fold areas are. And all right, coming around here, around here. It's just such a soft area. And to the top of the nose, back up in here. All right, so we got that. Feel good about that. To come up here, just go around the eye. Now, okay, very gentle eye. Come down here, kind of go around. Just you just have to look. That's the, the big thing, the big secret to it all. And that's true of every single thing. So, and some people just, when is a painting finished? Well, 
when you look at it and you really can't, you just can't think of anything else that you need or want to do at that time to, that would actually improve it. Um, now, I'm going to go back into this eye just a little bit. So I'm feeling like we need a little, yeah, kind of an opposite color. Alright, and so, let's see, got that. Now I'm going to come in and some grays going. Um, some grays and some reds on the hair, on the mane. And then we'll, we'll pretty much be done. We just need to be sure. And we've got to get the hairs on the eyes, too. So I'm just going to come in like so. Just a few stray hairs like that. Um, got some areas here that are kind of in the light. I want to get on that. Soften it up. Let the water do the mixing. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to get some, some of the titanium white, a little bit of the blue. Because black sometimes, when it's in the light, if you see someone with, with black hair, truly black hair, the highlights are blue. And so we've got, just going to paint some of those blue highlights, and that makes a nice contrast also to the, um, to all the brown that we've got going here. So I'm going to come in, the lights hitting the top of the, of the head. So we're going to come in with some blue, and we're still going to come in with some, some white, some very, very light color to show the light. And a few stray hairs here and there, still. I'm going to soften the eye. It's a, it's a comparison see something you need to do, you just go in there and do it, and then we'll get it all done. Okay, so we'll soften some of this main area here. Let's go back in and continue to, to paint where the light is coming in uh, and touching the top of the, of the horse. And then we also have that ear area, but let me go ahead and finish getting this. Okay, now we're getting into some nice wide strokes on the main. And that's part of being an artist, I think, is um, looking into the darks and seeing what colors, what colors are in the darks, what colors are in the lights. Because if dark is the absorption of all colors, then there's a lot of color in, in every dark. It's just up to you to kind of pick them out. And if white is the reflection of all lights, then you know that white is, is so much more than just a non-color, a white. It's also got many other colors in it. So basically, they act the same way. It's just your value scale is going to be a little different. So I'm going to come into the ear here. Just want to get that nice and soft this down, coming around. Um, now, what I want to do right now is add the hairs because animals have long hairs that, especially off the the muzzle area, and actually they're usually, um, these, these are highlighted, so just going to kind of pull them down very gently. But those hairs really show them their world help them navigate, and, and then there are the hairs and the eyes. And so you just want to just let people know that you know they're there. Now, we're going to put some final lights in the, in the main and then take a look at it and see if we're done. 
uh, and then to do a very, very light background wash. And then that'll be it. So this is where the, the light is coming in and hitting the mane. Um, painting, painting animals and having to, having to do paintings that require so much detail gives you a lot of time to think so you can think about whatever you want to think about but um because it really doesn't matter it's just the process of allowing uh, your mind to think on a whole on a different level you're kind of in a different place um, some people call it alpha which is really what it is but it just gives your brain takes your brain to a different place and um, to a different level where you can where you just view your world a little differently so your thinking processes are going to be a little different too the lights on the top and so that's what we're doing we're just hitting the top here and we're just going to smooth some of this out and I do believe the ox gall does help that And in the end, you'll not only have a horse, but you'll, but you'll have a good idea, an even better idea of how you got, how you arrived to get there. Now let's just do a quick um, wash on the background, just to give it a little. And of course, it's in a pasture. We'll kind of, um, we'll use some earth and green, and I'm just going to mix it in here with all the other colors because I kind of want a grayed green, and I want a very, very light wash, and I just want something that's that's going to kind of indicate that the horse is outside. Then we'll turn it back upside down, right side up, I mean. I don't even know which way. It's what happens when you paint like that. You forget. Just kind of fill in the, the background so that it's not so harsh. And this gives you a good idea of how the how the uh, this surface paper kind of handles paint. If you were working on hot pressed, wherever you wherever I just dropped those daubs would have stayed there a lot more so than they're doing here. So it's kind of it's interesting. You need to try different different surfaces of of paint. And because this is in the background, I'm gonna just kind of move this around just because it's easier for the way I do the brush. And just got in the background. Let's just drop a little bit of blue just for fun because um, blue makes things recede. Just kind of push the blue back here. And then actually this, this is kind of neat because you really don't know how that's going to end up drying but and it'll be more blended than than how you've got it blended because the water will kind of dissipate everything and just make a little bit more interesting lift some of that then let's turn it right side up and see what we got well I think we have a horse I guess the last thing you want to do always is sign it so and I really love how the, the paint here is granulated and that happens a lot um, when, it, when you're working real wet and wet. But this basically states the horse. And um, we could take it even farther, but right now that just kind of gives you an idea. Um, there are things, there's still some things that I could do to it, but for, for the value of the time we have in here, that's how you're going to approach a vignette. And, uh, and we've got a horse finished. Thanks.